Hi everyone, Floyd Meyer here. I am a physician assistant with a master's in public health, a degree in molecular biology, and I'm currently working in physical medicine and rehabilitation. Today we're gonna to be continuing our series on resilience, which is the ability to remain well, recover, and even thrive in the face of adversity. This week we're going to be discussing nutrition and how your overall nutrient status and whether you're overweight or obese is now more important than ever post COVID. Everyone knows that maintaining a healthy weight is going to decrease your risk of a multitude of different diseases, but most of those diseases are chronic and they take decades for any symptoms to appear. And this is one reason why so many people will discount the effects of being overweight and obese because they don't notice these negative consequences until they have been overweight or obese for many, many years. But now with COVID spreading throughout the United States, being overweight and obese can cause serious consequences right now. In fact, multiple studies are now being published showing increased requirements of ICU admissions in individuals with obesity, meaning they have a BMI of greater than 30. And this effect is present even in young, quote unquote, healthy individuals. So one such article, which was posted in Clinical Infectious Disease, looked at data from COVID positive patients who went to a hospital in New York City. And they showed that those individuals with a BMI of greater than 30 were more than two times more likely to be admitted to acute and critical care respectively, compared to individuals with a BMI of less than 30. And then another study showed that 77% of nearly 17,000 people who were hospitalized with COVID-19 were overweight and obese. This is a huge reason why the United States has been hit so much harder than most other countries is because we have such a high proportion of people that are overweight and obese. In fact, the, the most recent data that's coming out is actually showing that about 40% of United States adults are overweight or obese. You know, that's nearly half of our population that is now at more than two times the risk of needing intensive care compared to other people who have a BMI of less than 30. So if you are overweight or obese, you know, where should you start? Should you just crash diet and try and lose the weight really quickly? Well, thankfully the answer is no. You know, the losing weight very quickly, it's generally not going to be effective in the long term and losing weight extremely fast will actually decrease your immune system, which will make you more susceptible to both getting disease and having more severe disease if you do become infected with any type of virus or bacteria. So what I generally recommend for people is to start with controlling your portion sizes. So using a portion control guide, like the one that was made by Precision Nutrition, which is an excellent resource for multiple things nutrition related, it's going to take all of the guesswork out of your meal planning and it's gonna remove the barrier that could be present with calorie counting. Some people, calorie counting can work very, very well, but for a lot of other people, it can be extremely difficult and it can be a barrier to them actually losing weight. So as you can see in this graphic, it's all going to be guided by your hand size, which makes it super easy to measure your meals. And the nice thing is that generally your hand size is going to be correlated with your body size, making your portions individualized to your body. And you'll see in the graphic that it's broken up between if you're a man or if you're a woman, and it's going to, for females, generally you're going to be using about one palm size for your protein, for your carbohydrate, for your vegetable, and then for your fats, you're gonna use one thumb. And for males, you're gonna use two of your palms for all of those. So for your protein, for your carb, for your vegetable, and then two thumb sizes for your fat. And now, it's important to note that this is just a starting point. Your meals may need to be incre increased or decreased slightly from this depending on your individual metabolism and your individual goals and your activity level. But at least having somewhere that you can start and have some consistency, it's going to allow you to much 
more easily make changes when they need to be. So if you are not losing weight or you're not losing as much weight as you would like to, an easy thing you could do would be to decrease either the carbohydrate or the fat portion of your meals. So if you were a male instead and you are not losing as much weight as you would like to, an easy thing is to just have one cup full of the carbohydrate portion or one thumb of the fat for each of your meals instead of the regular two and then do that for a couple of weeks to months and then see how you're doing and you're constantly reevaluating because in general your portion sizes are not going to remain static they're going to change based off of how your life changes based off of if you start playing a new sport based off of you know if you start a new exercise program or things like that all of that is going to impact if the size of the meals that you are eating so in the coming weeks, we're going to be diving a lot deeper into nutrition. We're going to be discussing how nutrition affects your overall resilience. We're going to be discussing your micronutrient status. We're going to be discussing fasting. We're going to be discussing hydration. So stay tuned for that. So I hope this has been helpful. If this resonated with you, please share it with your friends and family. Make sure that you are subscribing and following for more of this content. If you guys have any questions, make sure you leave them in the comments below. So again, this is Floyd Meyer. Have a great day.